So Sheridan thought something looked strange about Alistair's face when she went up to take a closer look. His face was a mask. She pulled it off. It was a mask that was fitted on another coma patient. I, I, don't even, I, I can't believe this. I just, I don't even want to believe this. <sighs> Alistair is alive and kicking. I'm going to kill the doctor of that nursing home. We should have known. We should have trusted our suspicions. It's a brilliant plan. Who would have suspected that Alistair was healthy when his body was lying there unconscious for everyone to see? I think I'm going to be sick. Are, are you really sure that this is true? Listen, if you don't believe me, ask Sheridan, because she saw it with her own two eyes. She was trying to call Luis when I was leaving, and she couldn't get through to him from Harmony. That's why I wanted to get here as quickly as I could. Alistair's here in Rome. He's just lying in wait before he strikes. Well, honey, you know what? You should have stayed at home where it's safe. No, I wanted to come here and help. When a husband and wife are in trouble, they stick together. And who's watching my daughter? My daughter is safe up at the mansion with the nanny. Honey, I've got a really bad feeling that something horrible is about to happen. But what? I mean, if Alistair went to the trouble to fake his own coma, God knows he's probably up to something really awful. I just, I simply cannot believe this. You need to believe it. Because your loving husband is alive and kicking. And I can guarantee that when he reveals himself, the first thing he's going to want is you back in his bed. Gwen, come on. I'd rather be dead. Well, you know, we can't just sit here. So I, I'm going to call Luis and make sure he knows what's going on with Alistair. Is it all right if I leave you two ladies here alone for a minute? Honey, of course it is. At a time like this, we all need to stick together. Come on. Aren't you even going to ask me if I had a nice flight? Knock it off, Gwen. We both know that you're not here because you're concerned about Ethan or Alistair. You're here because you're frightened to death. Do I look frightened? I don't think so. Well, you should be, because I'm really close to finding J.T. Cornell, and when I do, you and your none-too-well-preserved mother are dead meat. He's going to expose you both as the liars that you are. Oh, you are absurd. You can't even believe what comes out of your mouth. I'm bringing you down, bitch. Oh, such, such gutter talk, Teresa. Listen, you can curse the hotel down if you want. I don't really care. Because it is so clear that Ethan doesn't believe a word you say, and he's not going to listen to JT either, if you can find him. Which you won't be able to, because he's long gone by now. Well, now, if you really believe that, then you wouldn't have flown on your broomstick all the way to Rome, right? You're worried, and you should be. Because you can't stop me from finding JT Cornell. I've got Crane Security searching for him. And I've offered to pay $50 million to any man or woman who brings him to me. Fifty million dollars, Gwen. You should think about that. You should think of the motivation. Pretty soon, JT and I will be buying you a one-way ticket to divorce court. <laughs>